All right, how's it going there, folks? Welcome back here to a Friday night. It is the Earthmaster here on this end, about 9 p.m. here, California time. March 29th, 2024. Goodness, getting closer and closer to the eclipse coming up here on the 8th. We'll take a look at the cloud cover forecast towards the end of this update. Looking at the last 24 hours of earthquake activity out here on the globe does show some further movement out across the Atlantic Ocean and the latest quake looks like a 1.7 into the area of Alaska. Going to be up here north. Uh, as far as any major movement going on up in Alaska, I think the 3.1 is going to be considered the largest up there. So really not a whole lot going on as far as uh, major earthquake activity goes. It's very typical up there for now. Across the Pacific Northwest, looks about the same as this morning. Really nothing major changing on or changing since then. Uh, let's give a quick glance here at the trimmer map here tonight. Cascadia trimmer shows about 50 epicenters here of trimmer around the southern Oregon area, specifically in this zone. It looks like it's just to the east of where those uh, earthquakes struck here last week, that 5.7 and a couple other earthquakes. So uh, a little bit of strain, uh, some trimmer going on down south there into the southern end of the Cascadia. Uh, California in general out here looks fairly quiet. There's not a whole lot of movement going on out here in the last 24 hours. Very small microquake activity at best. As uh, far as the Yellowstone National Park goes, super volcano up here in Wyoming. Really not a whole lot. Looks like they did add maybe one earthquake up here to the map. That's going to be the 1.6. But I know we have a little bit more than that on here. Let me check the latest seismograph stations here and the questionable quakes are going to be these right here in the red lines there's a handful of them probably six or seven or so um nothing big um they're stating the largest one there looks to be a one point uh one point six at 1503 that's going to be uh utc time of 2203 uh, let's go back over here. 2203 is going to be somewhere down in here. Maybe that one. So what about all these other ones? <laughs> kind of odd, but there's definitely a handful of earthquakes there. Nothing major going on, but um, there's a 1.3. That was way earlier this morning. So there's a handful that's missing out there, but they'll get to them. All right. Uh, Texas area still seeing some movement down here outside of Pecos. 2.7. And the rest of the... Uh, the rest of the map out here, very quiet. The New Madrid Seismic Zone here, 1.5 earlier last night. So really not a whole lot of newer movement going on out here across the North American plate for now. Uh, down here across the Kermadec Islands area, the last earthquake showed a 5.0 here up along the uh, surface area of the Tonga Trench. Now we have been seeing quite a bit of deeper scale movements here uh, deeper earthquakes here recently including this latest one a few minutes prior to this one uh, was a 4.4 down there at almost 600 kilometers deep so strain obviously adjusting up here at the surface levels we'll continue to watch that shallow earthquake from last night there across the Vanuatu area at a 5.3 or 5.0 excuse me uh, New Zealand area looks like still seeing some uh, deeper activity underneath the North Island area Really not seeing anything major going on down there for now. 4.7 up along the Mariana Trench. Fairly recent. It's going to be this earthquake right here. Earlier this afternoon it looks like. Well, actually, this, let's see what we got here. Yeah, it's a shallow earthquake. So about 10 kilometers deep there for that 4.7. And aside from that, a little bit of movement north here of the Himalayas. And some activity stretching up here across areas of the Middle East. Some four stirring up out here, it looks like. One earthquake in the Iran area from earlier this afternoon. Four-pointer in Turkey. 4.8 in Turkey there. 4.7, the latest though in this area. And that's technically way back here in terms of the um, time frame. So uh, let's see, anything else major going on in the earthquake world? Some deeper activity here across the Peru Chile Trench. Middle America Trench still seeing some earthquake activity, although that's very common. And the Puerto Rico area, quite a few two stirring up down there. But uh, it doesn't look like it's a huge swarm. Just a little activity out here across the um, Mariotos Trough, kind of deeper in this area. 
and a handful of earthquakes up here around the British Virgin Islands area. All right, far as uh, space weather goes, let's see what else we got here in terms of uh, activity. Notice uh, things are starting to decline here in terms of the solar flaring activity. That is because this giant sunspot here, 3615, is just about out of reach of the Earth view. Uh, tomorrow morning, this should be out further out and about, uh, not visible. And we'll be left with um, a couple measly sunspots out here. I guess that's the best word I can think of, but they're really not all that dynamic. The threat level will drop like a rock soon as that uh, 3615 is off on the western limb. Right now, while it's still in view, 25% chance for an X flare proton at 15 percent m flare at 75 percent chance and c flare at around 99 percent chance so again after that things will be clear out here no uh really no major sunspots uh to look forward to for now um you know we did see uh, a handful of m flares here over the last couple days but uh that's gonna go away here all right storm prediction center uh, as far as severe weather goes we're looking at a severe weather potential day on the fourth day four that's going to be into Monday. Looks like a pretty decent setup out here across Oklahoma into Missouri, parts of Arkansas, and extreme southeastern Kansas as well. Um, definitely got to pay attention to what's going on out here because it's getting close to that time. It is that time of year where severe weather really ramps up. But of course, severe weather can happen any time of the year, right? Winter, spring, summer, fall. But uh, the springtime is really the uh, most... Uh, prominent time when things really start to get going so day four day five we'll cover that a little bit uh, as we get a little bit closer there got another earthquake coming into the alaska area 3.3 .3 right now Let's see if that showed up on the globe yes it did 3.3 .3 up here all right so let's talk about the uh eclipse going on real quick um now, you guys have probably seen some uh, stuff floating around here. You know, a lot of stuff comes out in terms of conspiracy and fear-mongering videos when it comes to solar eclipses. I was out uh, for the uh, Oregon one here back in 2017. That was a beautiful sight. If you didn't get a chance to check out my video, this is it right here. Um, absolutely beautiful. You can see the sun dimming right there, and that's about the, the peak maximum. That was uh, incredibly awesome there. This was a jet liner that was up there giving uh, a show to the passengers. That's me over here on the left. Uh, but it was dark, and it was pretty much like a 360 um, sunset all around me. You could see the stars. Really can't really can't really see it here in the GoPro image here, but uh, uh, when I was doing the live stream, I have it here on my phone. Uh, it was quite incredible to see. So I'm, I'm very doubtful uh, that I'm going to go out there for this one because of the weather models here and the, uh, the way it's trending. But it's still a ways out there. But, uh, you know, it's leaning more towards a lot of cloud cover. Let me pull up the uh, latest information here. Got to make sure I got the latest one. Uh, unfortunately, that latest one here is only going to go out to about the 4th. Uh, so we do have to go back one run uh, to see what's going on around the 8th time period. And we want roughly about he... No, that's Tuesday. Let's see here. We want the 8th at about 18Z time. So that'll put it in the, uh, the early afternoon time period. So here is the totality line. Um, the cloud bank here, the cloud cover percentage is kind of backing off further to the west. Now, that can be bad for a lot of Texas out here, Oklahoma. But uh, looking up here, though, there's a decent chance of some clarity. The clouds are in the blue. Uh, white is going to be clarity out here. And, um, you know, if it stays this way, this is pretty nice. But I don't see myself driving all the way up to Ohio or Illinois to see any of this activity. Uh, I had planned to drive the 24-hour drive from California out here to Texas for the totality. But if that is not going to happen, then more than likely I unfortunately won't be able to go uh, because I, I can't put another 24-hour drive time on here 
uh, to go up to uh, further states. But we'll, com we'll continue to cover that, uh, the cloud cover percentage. But a lot of people out there talking about how um, this eclipse and the last eclipse going to make an X over here across the New Madrid seismic zone. And, uh, you know, that's going to be uh, a trigger for an earthquake out there. Well, it didn't happen. Well, it didn't happen back in 2017. It's probably not going to happen this time. Does the moon have an effect on plate tectonics? I believe so. Kind of a theory, uh, but it makes sense, right? It does affect the tides out here, the ocean and whatnot. So the gravitational pull and stuff like that when the sun, uh, when the moon is between the sun and whatnot here, um, can create, uh, you know, some, some gravitational tug, but it doesn't always create earthquakes here. You know, we're always looking at a new moon every month, and that is the time when the moon here is uh, in between the earth and the sun, and we're not always seeing large earthquake activity on that date. So, um, you know, a lot of people taking advantage of the eclipse, stating that, it, uh, you know, the totality line is going over the new Madrid seismic zone, and that's going to be the trigger to pull the big one out here, and a bunch of crazy stuff going on out there. Take that stuff with a, uh, you know, just entertainment purposes. I would use that as uh, there's really no scientific proof of um, that happening. But uh, it's kind of crazy what people will uh, pull up here in times of interesting events. It's, it's really an interesting event, and I really hope I can see it. I hope everyone can see it out here because it is a once-in-a-lifetime event. Um, I'm not for sure when the next one is out here, but uh, goodness. Flights, you know, flights right now, if you were to try to get a flight out here, everything's booked. There's no rental cars. Um there's no hotel. Well, the hotels that are open are like six, seven hundred bucks a night around this time. These guys really uh, pulling the uh, oh, the price gouging on the motel and uh, other businesses out here as well. So it's neat to see, but I don't, you know, that's a lot of money to spend out here. Uh, and then uh, won't be able to find a rental car, even if you get out here to an airport. So you'd be walking. But um, anyway, the cloud cover percentage right now, you know, it looks so-so. And that's all dependent here on the subtropical jet. Let's bring up the numerical models here real quick and take a look at the eighth run. Well, this is hasn't updated yet either, so we need to go back one run. And look at the eighth, which is roughly about here for the total totality time frame. There's that low pressure. Uh, there is moisture working its way up here with that subtropical jet. It doesn't look like it's going to be raining yet, but uh, soon it will uh, that day on Monday and a Tuesday. But there's going to be a lot of cloud cover uh, due to that jet stream in that area. Um, let me go back here and show you guys the uh, upper air dynamics. This is a jet stream pattern uh, pulling in. It, it almost looks like it's joining the uh, the polar jet here from way up north. Uh, this would be centered right over uh, Arizona area. Uh, these two gaining strength together will create uh, you know a lot of cloud cover, some severe potential and whatnot. So it is a ways out, but it we're getting closer. So eventually. We're going to have to look at these models and make a definite decision here. Uh, but we got, uh, I think by the next Friday, I'll have my decision made uh, for sure in terms of if I'm going out there or not. Because that literally will give us uh, Saturday, Sunday, and then Monday when the eclipse is uh, there on on. Um, no, it's not on the on the uh, first. What am I thinking here? It's on the eighth, so the fifth, right? And then the next month. It's just because I haven't clicked this down here yet or up here. Uh, so anyway, on the eighth, that is when the eclipse is, and I'll know next Friday for sure if I'm going out there. And I think a lot of people need to plan it. Um, and decide on what they're going to do too, because if it's going to be a lot of cloud cover. Unfortunately, you know, it's, I don't know. I, I don't see what the point would be in going out there to uh, cover an event that's completely clouded over. 
and we checked out this one this one's just basically the same same type of runs here from the gfs this one's a brand new one but it's not going to be ready here for a little bit it only goes out until about the uh, april 5th time period but remember with each run here we get more and more accuracy more and more uh, consistency going on here in terms of the weather patterns that the computers are picking up Uh, seismograph stations here, fairly quiet, little spike there on Philippines um, and also the Chile area, seeing a little bit of movement. But aside from that, um, I think that's about it. Maybe I'll leave this link right here to my uh, solar eclipse video. And um, it's pretty cool to watch. I think the live stream itself was better. I was out there in Oregon live streaming that uh, six years ago now right yeah six years ago uh had about twelve thousand viewers on the live stream so it was pretty eventful and i was just streaming that from my uh from my cell phone and uh it, it was pretty cool uh, the gopro kind of gives you a, a cool little image as well i mean there's that little dot right in the center, center of the sun it was really dark out there really dark you could see the stars in the totality line where i was at and um it was definitely cool so uh hopefully we'll be able to see it again uh and provide a view but uh you know it's it's up in the air right now it's yes maybe maybe not not even leaning towards either of those yet we'll find out though next friday all right folks um have yourself a good one i think that's about it um there's that three-pointer coming into the alaska area nothing big uh, it just looks like uh there's that earthquake there popping up on the chili station that was a 4.5 that is off the chart here now it looks like but uh we'll keep an eye on things see how it goes overnight we'll catch you guys back out here in the in the morning saturday morning it's a weekend have a good one play it safe and uh, we'll see you guys back out here tomorrow sometime. Take care, folks.